are more than three million people in San Diego County. Usually we're all safe, no worries, but sometimes we have problems. Big problems like an earthquake or maybe a really bad fire. You may not know that in 2003 and 2007 there were fires so big they burned from the mountains all the way to the city. Sometimes in the winter we have enough rain to cause flooding. You've seen firefighters and police officers and paramedics helping people out on the street, right? But it takes a lot more than that. In a really big disaster, you need people working behind the scenes to make sure those first responders out in the field have everything they need to be successful. If you had a huge fire so big that half a million people needed to leave their homes to remain safe, you would need somebody to coordinate all that. Sending out calls to tell people to evacuate, setting up shelters, and keeping the public up to date. That's where this place comes in, the Emergency Operations Center. Here in the Emergency Operations Center, we're focused on the big picture. We want to make sure that first responders in the field have the equipment, the supplies, and the personnel that they need to be successful in the disaster response. Like making sure food is delivered to all the shelters, communicating with the governor about supplies, people, or equipment that's needed from the state. The Emergency Operations Center, they call it the EOC. It's inside this cool building in Kearney Mesa. What's really cool about it is what's underneath. Yeah, I said underneath it. Come here. See, check it out. Giant shock absorbers. They're all over this building. If there were a big earthquake right now, this building would kind of ride the wave. It would shake a lot, but chances are it wouldn't fall down and be destroyed. People who don't normally work together would suddenly be called here. Maybe a CHP officer and the county's top doctor wind up sitting right next to each other. Let's say the officer gets a phone call that Interstate 5 is shut because a truck has crashed and spilled hazardous chemicals. That doctor and hazardous materials experts know these chemicals can make people sick. The doctor says everyone living near the freeway should stay inside. So how do we reach you during a disaster to let you know that you need to stay inside or evacuate? We use a system called Alert San Diego. We have landline phone numbers. What we don't have is your cell number. Go home tonight, tell your mom, your brother, your dad, whoever's in your household, to go to our website and register your mobile phone. That's one of the main things we do here in the Emergency Operations Center, is send out those phone calls to let people know what actions they should take during a disaster. And there's an order to all this. The EOC has a structure. At the top, high-level county employees and elected officials make decisions and decide what should happen first. They also talk to state and federal agencies to get help from outside the county. The operations section is the subject matter expert for any given event. So if it's a pandemic, public health would take the lead. If it's a riot, law enforcement would be the operations lead. They make decisions, whatever it takes, to help responders in the field coordinate and communicate. The planning section thinks ahead. What will happen tonight or tomorrow? Do we have what we need to be ready? The information and intelligence section is responsible for making sure everyone in the room has information information about what is happening in the field. The logistics section finds and delivers supplies, people, and equipment needed by the emergency workers at the disaster site. They can help make sure fresh drinking water is sent to a neighborhood where pipes have burst during an earthquake or cots are ordered for disaster shelters. Finally, the finance section is tracking down how much money the disaster is costing and keeping all those financial records straight. People here in the Emergency Operations Center are collecting information from the field, but we're also sending information out to the public about the disaster. And that's where public information officers come in. You at home need to know what's happening. What is the actual emergency? Are there roads closed, evacuations? Public information officers here at the Emergency Operations Center are giving disaster-related updates to reporters by phone and also at press conferences. We're also posting information to our social media websites, to our emergency website, and to our mobile app. And live operators at 211 are taking calls from the public. Some of those here help after the disaster is over, helping people recover. Recovery is not easy, and depending on the disaster, it can take a long time before we're back to normal. We begin to recover when we start rebuilding homes, repairing roads and bridges, and opening businesses that were closed. That also includes fixing the damages at your school if it was impacted. 
We all have a responsibility to be prepared, have a plan, and be ready. Remember, the people who would normally be sitting in this room can't do it all, but they will do all they can to help keep you safe. Don't be scared, be prepared. Thank you.